Bodybuilding is often described as both an art and a science. For decades, the world of strength training and physique development was built on instinct, tradition, and the lessons passed down from generations of iron warriors. But as the years went on, scientific research began to pull back the curtain, revealing the biological, physiological, and mechanical principles that truly drive muscle growth. Today, modern bodybuilding stands at the crossroads between old-school wisdom and cutting-edge science. And in this video, we're diving deep into what the research actually tells us about how bodybuilders should train if they want to build the most muscle possible. In the earliest eras of bodybuilding, pioneers like Steve Reeves, John Grimek, and Reg Park built their physiques using little more than intuition and fierce dedication. They didn't have access to PubMed, sports science journals, or advanced coaching systems. They learned through doing, testing, failing, and trying again. And even with limited equipment and virtually no scientific guidance, they built bodies that inspired generations. But what they didn't know and what today's research has finally uncovered is why their training methods produced the results they did. They didn't know that mechanical tension was the primary driver of hypertrophy. They didn't know how muscle fibers responded to load at different lengths. They didn't know how protein synthesis behaved after a workout or how rapidly it returned to baseline. Yet their methods often aligned with what research later confirmed to be optimal. One of the biggest scientific revelations about muscle growth centers around mechanical tension, the physical force placed on muscle fibers when they are resisting a load. Early studies in the 1990s and 2000s began to show that tension is the single most important factor in hypertrophy. While metabolic stress and muscular damage contribute, they are secondary. Mechanical tension is the king. Researchers like Brad Schoenfeld, James Krieger, and Jeremy Loenecke dove deep into the mechanisms of hypertrophy and found that tension-induced signaling, particularly involving the mTOR pathway, is what truly initiates muscle growth. In practical terms, this means that exercises allowing you to move moderate to heavy loads through a long range of motion are incredibly effective. Squats, Romanian deadlifts, bench presses, rows and overhead presses aren't legendary because they're traditional. They're legendary because they place high tension on the muscles. But science didn't stop there. Researchers began examining the role of training volume, the total amount of hard work performed over a period of time. A groundbreaking 2017 meta-analysis showed that higher weekly training volumes produced greater hypertrophy as long as the lifter recovered adequately. Studies supported the idea that roughly 10 to 20 challenging sets per muscle group per week represent a highly effective range for growth. This doesn't mean that everyone needs 20 sets or that 10 is too little. Individual response varies drastically due to genetics, lifestyle, and training age. But the takeaway is clear. Bodybuilding requires a substantial amount of work to maximize growth. This understanding of volume led scientists to investigate training frequency, how often each muscle should be trained. For decades, the bodybuilding world swore by the traditional bro split, where each muscle was trained once per week with high intensity. While this method can work, especially for enhanced bodybuilders, scientific studies began showing that training each muscle twice per week or even three times for smaller muscle groups produces superior growth in most cases. This is because muscle protein synthesis spikes after training but returns to baseline within 48 hours. Training only once per week leaves long periods where the muscle receives no growth stimulus. When frequency is increased, the muscle is stimulated more consistently, allowing for better long-term progression. One of the most misinterpreted topics in bodybuilding is training to failure. Old school wisdom glorified pushing every set to absolute exhaustion. In the golden era, Arnold famously said, the last three or four reps is what makes the muscle grow. And while there's truth in that statement, modern research adds nuance. 
Scientific studies show that training close to failure within one to three reps is nearly as effective as reaching complete muscular failure, but with reduced fatigue and lower injury risk. However, this doesn't mean failure is useless. In fact, research supports the strategic use of failure, especially on isolation movements or machine exercises where safety is not compromised. What science rejects is the idea of taking every single set to the limit, especially with heavy barbell movements where fatigue accumulates quickly and can increase injury risk. Another scientific breakthrough came with the discovery of stretch-mediated hypertrophy. Multiple studies conducted throughout the 2000s showed that exercises challenging the muscle in its lengthened position, the bottom of a squat, the deep stretch of a dumbbell fly, the bottom of a Romanian deadlift stimulate more growth than movements emphasizing contracted positions. Researchers observed that muscles grow in response to mechanical tension when they are stretched under load, leading to adaptations like sarcomere addition and unique hypertrophy pathways. This is why deep squats grow quads efficiently, why incline curls transform biceps, and why calves respond incredibly well to full range, slow eccentrics. This entire concept reshaped bodybuilding training, encouraging lifters to manipulate range of motion, tempo, and exercise selection to enhance stretch stimulus. Another major shift in bodybuilding training came from research on rest periods. Gym folklore insisted on short rests, 60 seconds, sometimes even less to keep the pump or keep the muscle working. But scientific studies contradicted these old ideas. In 2016, a landmark study found that longer rest periods upward of two to three minutes resulted in significantly greater strength and hypertrophy gains. The reason is simple. With more rest, performance in later sets improves, enabling more total quality volume. And as we've already learned, quality volume is one of the most powerful drivers of growth. The pump still has value, especially for metabolic stress and creating cellular swelling, but long-term hypertrophy relies more heavily on generating high tension through properly executed sets rather than maintaining fatigue. And what about load? For decades, bodybuilders heard the phrase, lift heavy to grow. Heavy lifting is undeniably effective. But studies comparing heavy loads 80 to 85% of one rep max to lighter loads around 30 to 50% produced an unexpected result. Both were similarly effective for hypertrophy as long as sets were taken close to failure. Light weights can grow muscle, heavy weights can grow muscle. The key is not the load itself, but the level of effort and the amount of tension produced. Heavier weights, however, do seem to produce greater strength gains, which can indirectly support long-term hypertrophy by allowing more tension to be applied over time. Technique has also undergone a scientific transformation. Early bodybuilders often prioritized moving weight from point A to point B by any means necessary. Modern science emphasizes biomechanics, the study of how joints, muscles, and resistance interact. Electromyography, EMG, studies helped identify not only which exercises activate muscles most effectively, but how slight adjustments, elbow path during rows, wrist angle during curls, torso position during presses can dramatically alter muscle recruitment. This has led to a more precise style of bodybuilding training, where every angle, every rep, and every movement pattern is intentionally selected to align with the body's natural mechanics. Often overlooked in bodybuilding culture is the science of recovery. Early bodybuilding lore was filled with phrases like sleep is for the weak or no days off. But research strongly contradicts these ideas. Sleep is one of the most potent recovery tools available. During deep sleep, the body releases growth hormone, repairs tissues, replenishes glycogen, and restores neurological function. Studies have shown that even minor sleep reductions can decrease strength, reduce testosterone, impair reaction time, and limit muscle growth. 
Nutrition is equally important. Protein intake of roughly 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight per day maximizes muscle protein synthesis. Carbohydrates fuel training performance. Dietary fats support hormone production. Hydration enhances strength, endurance, and training capacity. Science also revealed some of the worst practices in bodybuilding mistakes that can sabotage progress even in hard-working lifters. The first is junk volume. This refers to sets that are too easy to stimulate growth, but still produce fatigue. Excessive high rep, low effort training may create a pump, but it contributes very little to hypertrophy. Another ineffective practice is excessively high frequency without proper recovery. Training a muscle every day may sound intense, but without recovery the stimulus becomes too small to matter. A third common mistake is random programming constantly switching exercises, rep schemes, or entire routines. While variety is useful, it becomes counterproductive when it prevents the lifter from progressing on key movements. Progressive overload requires consistency. Without it, long-term growth stalls. One of the most misunderstood topics in bodybuilding is genetics. Science has shown that genetics play a major role in muscle fiber composition, tendon insertion points, response to training volume, recovery speed, and even how much muscle an individual can gain in a lifetime. But genetics are not destiny. Research consistently shows that nearly everyone has the potential to dramatically transform their physique with the right training approach. Instead of comparing oneself to elite bodybuilders, many of whom are genetic outliers, the focus should be on aligning one's training with their individual response patterns. Modern bodybuilding science has also embraced the concept of periodization, the systematic planning of training. While strength athletes have used periodization for decades, bodybuilders only recently began applying it more widely. Periodization involves cycling training volume, intensity, and exercise selection to prevent plateaus and optimize progression. Some bodybuilders use linear progression, slowly increasing weight or reps over time. Others use undulating models, alternating heavy, moderate, and light days. The science is clear. Structured training produces superior long-term results compared to random training. Another area gaining attention is the importance of exercise execution. Science has highlighted that the internal sensation of a muscle working, often called the mind-muscle connection, isn't just bro science. Studies show that intentionally focusing on contracting a specific muscle increases its activation, especially during isolation movements. This doesn't mean you should lift with extremely light weights, but rather that combining moderate loads with intentional muscle engagement can enhance results. As bodybuilding science continues to evolve, the most successful athletes are those who merge old-school intensity with modern evidence. The champions of today understand that pushing hard matters, but pushing smart matters even more. They understand that training is only one piece of the hypertrophy puzzle. Recovery, nutrition, biomechanics, exercise selection, and progression all play essential roles. And they understand that building muscle is a marathon, not a sprint. In the end, the truth about bodybuilding training is beautifully simple. Your muscles grow when they are challenged, damaged, and then repaired. They grow when you apply tension, recover properly, and repeat the process over weeks, months, and years. Science provides the answers, but dedication provides the results. The lifters who build the greatest physiques are those who apply scientific principles consistently, refine their technique, track their progress, listen to their bodies, and commit to the long game. Bodybuilding will always remain a combination of art and science. It's about sculpting a physique with intention, discipline, and intelligence. And thanks to modern research, we now understand more about hypertrophy than any generation before us. 
Whether you're a seasoned lifter or just starting your journey using science-backed training principles can take your progress to heights you never imagined. Train hard, train smart, and let the science of muscle growth guide you to your strongest, most powerful, and most muscular self.